Hey guys, t -Bler. Today I thought we'd take another look at the Arkansas. Here's my Sims build that I currently use. Uh, the Arkansas is back in the store and, along with the Iwaki this week. So I'll probably cover the Iwaki tomorrow. Uh, I do want to cover this estuary map playing the center spawn, especially with the uh, battleship as well though. But Arkansas, if you need a tier 3 premium for uh, doing your weekly missions, I mean this is probably... Uh, there's a few really strong tier threes. This is definitely one of them, though. Uh, possibly have the most Krakens out of any of my ships on this one. I don't play it a whole heck of a lot. I'm not a strong proponent of experienced players spending a lot of time in tier three, but I do usually pull this one out, you know, maybe once a week uh, to go after that mission. Uh, but here we see where we are in the center spawn here. This is a very powerful position for battleships to play. Uh, you can cover the majority of the map. You do have a pretty decent amount of cover. You will probably get spotted from airplanes throughout, but you know if you're playing carefully, that's all right. And this allows you the flexibility to move around the map if the enemy ends up loading heavily on one side or the other. But I usually try to or try to play the middle to start with, and then let the game develop from there. So kind of the one threat to you is having DDs rush through these two little gaps you know that are in the center there from their spawn to your spawn. A lot of times destroyers will sneak in there. This Clemson came around going the other way which is kind of a weird route but Furutaka comes through here we're able to rip them hard and that's kind of you are very strong at covering this position I don't usually push forward too close to the um, the islands. You know, this is about as far as you want to go. Again, because those DDs, if they sneak around, yeah, they can torpy very quickly. But Furutaka, hopefully <laughs> he learned his lesson there. I mean, that's not a strong play for a cruiser to emerge broadside. And frankly, you'll, the more you play the center position, the more you'll see ships of all stripes kind of just plowing through these two little gaps in the middle. And they'll quite often come through broadside, you know, they'll be attempting to support the flanks. But you do need to be very careful. I don't recommend moving from the center through those gaps on either side early on in the match. Um, just because often there's going to be some ships covering the positions like I am doing right here. Now Arkansas is a souped up version of the Wyoming. I think it has artillery plotting room if I'm not mistaken, which increases the accuracy. So even if you're stuck with some bum like George Dewey. Although George Dewey is forgotten today. Uh, in 1899, he was equivalent of a, of a rock star. That really shouldn't cause too many problems for you in the ship. The low tier, you know, tier three, tier two, tier three, tier four, tend to be a little bit closer engagements. And, you know, the, the ship is about as accurate as you're gonna find for a tier three battleship as uh, some of these ships throughout this match will um, soon find out. Phoenix shots away, he gone, number one. <laughs> you know, that, yeah, there's, there's just, uh, this is kind of the seal clubber's delight, I guess, which maybe I should hesitate endorsing this too quickly, or too uh, heartily. But if you're going to play responsibly and leave these new players alone for the most part and just use it to get your weekly uh, promotion orders from those... Uh, Sunday crates or whatever, that's fine. Danae comes around, he didn't really think that Sims was all that accurate, so we... He got on him as well, and that's two dev strikes in a row. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, the Danae. People keep clamoring for the British cruisers, My, I'm looking forward to them as well. They're saying early next year, which, you know, could be a month or two from now. I hope to God they're not all just one giant citadel like the Danae as well, because that ship is currently my favorite ship to shoot at in the game uh, for <laughs> obvious reasons. Anyway, getting back to this uh, game here. You can see basically we're just patrolling this area and as long as the enemy is going to keep presenting targets to me, we're not really... Um, there's no impetus or there's no motivation to leave this position. Now eventually, usually in most games the targets will dry up. You can take some shots around here. You can see we're going to try and squeeze them here. You do have that white triangle on the screen right now which is saying from the center position of the ship the shot is obstructed. But you never know with those back guns if they can um, sneak through there or not. So 
I attempted to shoot that shot there and go for three dev strikes in a row, but unfortunately, uh, the Omaha is moving a little bit right to left faster than I'm moving left to right or backing up left to right. So we're unable to get him, but that's no uh, no major concern here. Now this Emily, this is a ship that it hasn't really presented a great shot to me yet, but I do need to be wary about it if it gets too close to me. I can effectively dev strike that one in the side like I've been able to with the more heavily armored light cruisers. Um, now if that ship does angle towards me we could potentially one shot it but you'll see here we score some shots and you know if you look at the damage counter we just get about 3k damage and that's usually what you're going to get going to get shooting those Emily's with the the battleship AP round just over pens which should be about a thousand damage per hit but I don't want I don't want him to get through this gap and tort me because he could actually be um, a fairly significant threat to me so we're just going to keep trying to tag him a little bit here even though you can't massively damage these things if that's what you have to shoot at you might as well shoot at them chip them down and you know they're not chock full of hp so even if you can whittle them down over time that's still a good play now as i'm watching this back this is kind of an atypical deployment on this i mean a lot of times with estuary you're going to have domination so people are going to be pulled to the wings the east and the west side of the map a little bit more due to that but um and perhaps maybe again being a low tier game these players are a little um not sure of what they should be doing but it's not that often that you'll see these games where you're still you know in the center position this late in the game usually you're going to um you know and granted it's not that late in the game but <laughs> you know usually you play the middle like this, get some shots, and you'll more often get crossfire shots into the western side of the map, into the eastern side of the map, and you do have that ability to do that from this position. But, you know, because these players are just kind of playing their base, that's fine. As long as there's targets to shoot here, there's no need to, you know, really leave. And, <laughs> you know, these guys are um, absolutely getting wrecked by what's going on with this Arkansas. Now this, you can see, mine's called Arkansas FE. That's the Founders Edition. Uh, the one you get now from the store, it won't have the FE designation. A little bit less gaudy camo. I don't actually know what the Arkansas looks like, but I'm sure it's probably more visually appealing to a lot of players than this one. But, um, you know, stats-wise, it should be identical. So... You know, I, I do recommend this ship. You know, it's a it's a very solid ship. You'll see two or three Arkansas man divisions running around sometimes, and if you are playing a tier three match and you see that, it's your kind of duty to kill those players <laughs> if you're skilled enough to do so. Because if that's what they're doing, they're just trying to you know wreck these new players' experience and get them to go back to playing Call of Duty or Fortnite. Which, as ambassadors of this game, is not our job, so... <laughs> but, uh, getting back to the commanders, I do have Sims in this now, and I think it's a fine choice. If you can boost the already good accuracy, you can see how punishing this ship can be. I've formerly run Lee, and I've talked to a lot of players that currently run Lee. I only have Lee at level 8, so I'm not... I'm not inclined to use him too often currently, but the ship does have really good secondaries, and you'll notice that if you run kind of a brawling build with Lee, you will definitely be, you know, having these secondaries go off, and they'll be kind of the dominant secondary platform at this tier. I've, those of you that have watched my content a lot know that I don't um, put too much stock into the secondary builds, but it is something to consider, and I think the uh, tankiness that you can achieve with the Lee build uh, could work quite well. Now, if you don't have any commanders and you're stuck using Dewey, <laughs> you know, the Rockstar, that's fine. You know, he's it's serv serviceable until you get a better battleship commander, but once you do, the generic commanders, the default commanders for each nation, tend to not very do very well in battleships, whereas in destroyers, they can actually arguably be, you know, 
I've, I've talked to really good players that have claimed that, like, Jello Cole, for instance, is the strongest uh, destroyer commander for the British destroyers, for instance. I'm not inclined to necessarily disagree with them, but the, the options in terms of perks are much better for destroyers. They're okay for cruisers, and they tend to be pretty poor uh, for battleships, so as soon as you can get other options for your battleship commanders, I would just get away from those generics, at least as the main commander. You can always look at the inspirations. Uh, so here we're kind of mainly dealing with, or I'm mainly concerned with this destroyer, but we did, were able to dodge his salvo, and now we're kind of angled towards this Brittany back here, but while the guns are going through, reloading, we're just going to finish him off. Give him a little love tap on the side there, and uh, what are we up to? Is that five kills? Yep, that's the Kraken right there, and 120k damage. Now I'm trying to engage with this uh, T-22, looks like, and finish him off for the six kill, but I think this the guy kind of gets away from me, and then the rest of the game is me chasing around the destroyer and the Emily with no success. So probably fast forward it there. So that'll do it for this one. Again, I do recommend this if you need a tier three premium, but not a seal clubber vessel. <laughs> Although it does work well for that, if that's what you're interested. If you did like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Questions, comments, leave them below, and we'll see y'all later. All right, peace.